My favorite memory of Ashton and Brienne, that's, that's tough. Uh, I got a, a ton of them. We were heading uh, to Sacramento for a, a spring break a multis competition. I believe it was 2008. Um, they were starting to see each other. People knew it, but they were trying to keep it on the down low. And uh, I was sitting next to Ashton uh, on the plane to Sacramento. I remember this conversation vividly. Um, and I said, what's going on with Brienne? And he said, well, it's complicated. I said, well, I doubt it. Um, are, are you, is she your girlfriend? And he said, uh, no, she's not my girlfriend. Uh, we're, we're just dating. I said, I don't know what that means. Um, are, are you allowed to date other girls? Would she get mad? And he goes, yeah, she'd get mad. I said, okay, um, can she date other boys or would you get mad? No, I'd get mad. I said, well, Ashton, that's the dictionary definition of a girlfriend. And he laughed and he said, okay, I, I guess she's my girlfriend. And I dropped it. But then later on that night, we were going over the rules uh, for travel, something we do at every meet. And we got to the part about staying in the hotel, not going in boys' rooms, and boys not going in girls' rooms. And, and I said um, in front of everybody, I said, well, now that Ashton and Brienne are officially boyfriend and girlfriend, and uh, Brienne's mouth went open, she was like, ah, and she looked immediately at Ashton, and Ashton just looked and he put his head down. <laughs> he was in so much trouble. It was hilarious. Uh, probably not for Ashton. One word to describe Ashton, um, passionately, shit, passionately curious, I guess that's two words, <laughs> but it's what he is. He's got, he's got an intense thirst for learning. He, he, uh, he eats up information. He loves it. If there's one word to describe Brienne, I don't know what it is, but there's a picture that does a pretty good job. Um, it's, it's in Rio. You've probably all seen it. Um, she, after the 800, she's standing there. Everybody's lying down on the track, and she's standing there. And and the the expression on her face says it all. I don't know that I've ever been so proud of a former athlete as I as I was of her in that moment. And that picture captured everything you want to know about her. I love everything about that picture. Um, a story about Ashton that. Uh, is near and dear to my heart. It was 2008, he was a sophomore, he never won a national title. We're in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and he's in a dog fight with uh, the kid from Tennessee, Jangi Addy, terrific athlete, very well coached, veteran, and it was his meet to lose. But Ashton's the upstart. Ashton was doing a really good job. Um, we, we get to the pole vault, and he'd been vaulting really well in, in practice, and, and I, I thought he was gonna vault high that day, and everything was fine. Um, but what people didn't know, what he didn't know, I didn't say anything. My, my wife was very pregnant uh, with our second son, Blake, at the time, although we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. Um, and there were some complications. Um, it, it killed me to be at the national championships because uh, she had a doctor's appointment and they, they were, they did done, they'd done some testing and um, we were gonna get the results and I wanted to be with her and, and I couldn't be with her. Um, so I was waiting for the phone to ring and it was during the pole vault and uh, I, I knew she was gonna be calling to tell me if it was good news or bad news and I was really stressed out about it and um, I wasn't I wasn't fully engaged I, I was um, totally distracted and Ashton didn't get the best of me in that moment um, and uh, long story short he didn't vault high he probably he probably left 100 points um, off the off his score because of the vault and and probably because I wasn't I wasn't a great coach in that moment um, but the phone call came in and my wife said that everything everything was fine there was no issue uh, she, she told me the sex it was a boy and uh, I was just so happy and so relieved and you know I felt bad that Ashton didn't jump well but there was just a sense of relief over me. And, um, and I remember walking with him to the javelin and I, and I told him, well, you know, you, you now have nothing to lose, Ashton. Um, that makes you pretty dangerous because on paper, there's no way you can beat this kid. So we're gonna go into the javelin and we're just gonna let it go. We're gonna see what happens and uh, you've got no pressure on you now because you're not supposed to win. We go to the javelin and, uh, Everything was clicking for him. His first throw was good. His second throw was 
a, a pretty big PR, and then his third throw took off, and it was in the air, and I was just watching it, and it just kept going. And I, I almost started crying before it landed because I knew he had just won the national title in, in an event that had been such a nightmare for him. He was terrible at the time. Terrible. He could not put it together, but he did. He put it together, and even my terrible coaching in the vault that cost him probably over 100 points, even that couldn't stop Ash and Eaton. Um, and he kind of bailed me out. Um, I always felt like he kind of bailed me out by being such a hero and doing such an impossible thing in, in the javelin. Um, and I, I'll never forget it. I, I mean, that was it. And I, I knew he was going to win the national title because he was a great 1500 runner. And, um, and I was very confident. That was it. There's no way he's ever going to lose another national title. Um, this kid's on his way. And um, man, what a great moment. So um, when I when I think about Brianne and, and the different stories, um, 2009 it was we were in Arkansas for the NCAA championships and she was in a real dogfight for for the national title. She obviously she hadn't won before and um, she was doing a really good job. We get to the javelin and for her it was a real love hate relationship for her at the time and I think it probably still is. And uh, so. Her first throw was not good. Her second throw was not good. And I'm desperately trying to see, okay, what is it? What is it? What is it? And I gave her a cue. I don't remember what it was. I don't know if she listened to me. I don't know. All I know is on her third throw, she figured it out. And that thing took off. And just like just like the year before with Ashton, that javelin just took off. And it was like, she did it. She just won her national title because she was a, she was such a beast in the 800. There was no way that, that they would, anybody was going to catch her. Um, and uh, and then so fast forward to the 800, watching her and Calendra McFadden, who was also just such a tremendous part of that season um, and such such a fun training partner for her, watching them both come up the last hundred meters in that 800, uh, knowing that uh, her dream. One of her first dreams was was about to come true. Um, man, it was just such such a great emotional moment for me as a coach. Uh, I was so proud of her. So proud of her. She she had just dug deep and uh, she really showed uh, just a little bit of what was to come. Thank you, Brianne and Ashton, for uh, letting me be a part of your journey. It's one of the thrills of my life. I had so much fun working with you guys. So much fun. Um, just such great, determined young athletes. And you know, you, you had no egos then. You have no egos now. And I just love that. You, you did it because you loved it. You did it because you had dreams. And, um, and being able to, to watch what you, what you were able to come, what you were able to overcome, and, um, and just being able to... I have my kids be a part of that, watching the Olympics with my kids. Um, they were totally into it and, and knowing that, wow, they have heroes that are actually worthy of their adoration. Uh, and how, how great is that? So thank you for everything you did. Thank you for everything you did for Oregon, um, for, for just being tremendous people. It wasn't even so much what you accomplished, but but how you did it and, and who you are, and, and and that you never you never became something that we couldn't be very proud of. And that's a lot of pressure to put on you. I know that, but man, you guys are you're the real deal, both of you. And and, and how lucky am I and, and everybody else that's been a part of that that, that we got a front row seat um, to one of the greatest shows any of us have ever seen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Couldn't be more proud of you guys. And I look forward to seeing what's next because I know it's going to be pretty exciting.